Hi, this is Connie Jean Conklin with cscat.org again. <laughs> and I, um, I want to talk to you about why I believe that housing instability is the greatest barrier to recovery for survivors of child abuse. I was not homeless as a child, but events from my childhood led to why I was most vulnerable, vulnerable to be homeless today um, as I was abused as a child. Things that are meant to be taught by parents are not taught in a dysfunctional family. We're not taught to find and keep jobs, to find and keep housing, and to find and keep healthy relationships. We are taught to be afraid, or in some cases, very angry, but I took, I went the afraid route. <laughs> um, I was afraid, especially of adults in authority. We are taught to never speak our mind, never say what we think or what we need, and heaven forbid what we might just want. Um, we were taught that we were unworthy, hopeless, and of no value to anyone. I was blessed in that I loved to learn. I loved to read books and in high school where academic ability counted for more than plays well with others, which is something I always failed at in elementary. Um, in high school, I found teachers that cared um, because I liked to learn and they liked students who liked to learn. Um, and I can't emphasize enough for any of you that are teachers out there or considering becoming teachers, you can change the direction of a child's life. Now, I still went ahead and married the first guy who asked me in order to get out of that house. But eventually I did go back to school um, because we were both working and, um, and, and our incomes together allowed us to afford you know, a roof over our head and school, you know. In those days, college was not that outrageous, you know. We could pay by the term and, and get through school. Today, the young people of today don't have that luxury. They can't just, you know, take a handful of money and go for the term because they happen to come up with it, you know. It, it's much more complicated. I also was able to do it um, for another reason, and that is that somewhere along the way, my memories from my childhood were gone. I mean, they just disappeared. The tra traumatic memories, not all memories, but the traumatic memories disappeared. Um, and that is a form of dissociation from what I understand. Um, it was a term we didn't use back when I worked in the field because nobody believed in it, but but now they do. Um, and my memories were gone for quite a while. Um, and I was left with fear and anxiety and racing thoughts of suicide and the inability to maintain any kind of healthy relationships. But I had no memory of why. I functioned. I worked my way through college. I taught school for a while and I went into the mental health field where I actually did very well. But eventually those memories come back and you have no choice but to deal with them. It's not easy to do alone. It's just what I did for the most almost entirely. It's like learning to live all over again as a brand new and different person and you need to unlearn everything you learned in your childhood. I was homeless off and on from around 1982, uh, but a whole lot more today than in the past. When you're homeless, you relive those feelings and those beliefs from your childhood. And if you're like me, you hide. I tried to hide. I hid. The, it was the, my default mode from when I was a child to hide in the back of the closet and pull all the half-dirty clothes and stuffed animals over me so nobody could know I was there. Quiet as a mouse. I just hid. Um, 
but it's hard to do when you're homeless as an adult and you don't have a closet to hide in. I have been lucky to always have some kind of a vehicle um, as I've never stayed in a shelter when I was homeless. I was just too afraid to be around the strangers and I'm too afraid to ask for help. And it's still something that's very hard for me. Thank you.